Module 1, Lecture 1, Number Systems. Hi class, I'm Professor Dwight Hughes, and this is an IP subnetting in Tech 103 lecture. What is a number system? It's a way to express a numerical value. So if you have a value, you need a way to write that down, and that would be a number system. So numbers are not values, numbers represent value. Right, much like an apple is an apple, and so we have a word for apple, or water is water, and we call it water, and you could also call it agua, and it has many different names in different languages. So number systems could be analogous to languages. We can therefore convert from one number system to another and represent the same value. Here are some number systems that we commonly use in computer science, the binary, the octal, the decimal, and the hexadecimal. These are all what we would call common number systems, decimal, binary, hexadecimal, and Roman numerals. Interestingly, um, not all number systems are place value. A place value number system has symbols. Our number system decimal, for instance, has the symbols 0 through 9, and the value of those symbols is determined by where they're placed. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But there are number systems that do not involve place value, and Roman numerals is an example of just such a number system. In a Roman numeral number system, the place of the of the symbols does not determine its value. Actually, it's the order of the symbols that determines value, not the place. Okay, so place value number systems, what is it? I just told you, it's symbols that, depending on their placement, determines their value. Let's take a look then at a Roman numeral number system. So we have some Roman numeral numbers here. There are some interesting things with the Roman numeral number system. Uh, many folks don't know there's no zero, and so there's no way to represent nothing. Something unique about um, binary and decimal and hexadecimal is they include a symbol for zero. The zero symbol actually serves two purposes. The zero all by itself represents a null value of nothing, and when you combine the zero with other symbols, it takes the form of a placeholder. For instance, if you wanted to represent 100, you would put a 100. Zero, zero. The zeros don't have value, but they hold the place, giving the 1 the value 100. Anyhow, in a Roman numeral number system, the order of the symbols determines its value, not the place, but the order. Okay, let's look at decimal. We've used this most of our lives, so we know how to write it. We often don't write it with special notation, but you can see some special notations here. It's most widely used uh, numerical based number system in the world today because um, it's used by all humans. And uh, I'm not sure that's actually an accurate fact. It is the most widely used uh, numerical base used by humans, but there's many more computers than humans, right? So uh, computers probably uh, win with their binary number system. Anyhow, here's a breakdown of how the decimal number system would work. If you wanted to represent the value 101, as in this example, you're actually doing 1 times 10 to the second plus 0 times 10 to the 1 plus 1 times 10 to the 0. That's mathematically the way you would write that out. Those are the places. The places are 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, and 10 to the 2. And as we know, anything to the zero power is one. So that's the ones place, then you have the tens place, and then you have the one hundreds place. Let's look at binary for a moment. Binary is a base two number system, so you only have two symbols. Uh, the base tells you how many symbols you have to represent value. And in binary, there's just the symbols zero and one. It's the language that all electronic devices use to speak. Each digit is referred to as a bit. So all the ones and zeros, when you write them out, they are referred to as bits. As in the example here, 101 in binary would actually be equal to 5 in the decimal number system. If you look at the subscripted 2 and 5 in the example, sorry, 10, 2 and 10 in the example, you'll see that those are showing you what base, base 2 or base 10. 
let's look at base 16 or hexadecimal. So with hexadecimal, we have to have 16 symbols. So we have the common 0 through 9 that we're used to in decimal, and then they add A through F. A equals 10, B is 11, C is 12, and so on up until F, which is 15. We commonly use hexadecimal a lot with programming, but it's also used in the networking world. We'll be using it when we study IPv6 later this quarter. We are able to annotate the hexadecimal number with a 0x. Did you notice with the others, we put a subscripted 2 or a subscripted 10 to let people know what base we were talking about. One confusing thing when you're working with different bases as shown in the prior two examples, 101 could mean two different values depending if it was binary or decimal. And so if I put a 101 with a subscripted two, you would know I was talking about binary. And if I put 101 with a subscripted 10, you would know I was talking about decimal. Well, in hexadecimal, we put a 0x in front of the number. The 0x is just a meaningless um, annotation that we add that means hexadecimal number to follow. So the actual hexadecimal number is 2102 or 2142. Here's a hexadecimal number example for you, A37E. So you would break that down as shown in the diagram here. That's how mathematically you would do it again by place value. You have the 1's place, the 16's place, the 256 place, and so on. Terminology. A bit is one binary symbol, so a 1 or a 0. A nibble is a collection of four bits. So any four bits can be called a nibble. And you probably have heard the term byte or bytes. A byte is 8 bits. Or you could say a byte is 2 nibbles. Sometimes we'll call a byte an octet. Byte and octet mean the same thing. Octet is also a group of 8 bits. Let's do a whiteboard session on binary decimal hexadecimal conversions. When you're working with converting numbers it helps to have a conversion table. Just draw a line and draw some vertical lines. Something like that. And then your table is always going to start with a ones column. And because we're going to convert to binary, we're going to write the binary equivalents here. And then we can put a decimal number up here. Okay, and convert it. So a decimal number like 47. We just come along and treat that 47 like it's dollars. So think of this as $47. And then we're going to treat these as items at Walmart. So if you have $47, you can't afford a $2,000 item. So that's out. We put a zero there, a zero, a zero a zero, a zero. And finally, I can afford this item for 32. And of course, I can't afford the $16 item because that's just a dollar more than I have. That brings me to 48. So I'll have to pass on the $16 item. I can afford the $8 item. That brings me up to 40, 44, 46, 47. Done. You have now converted decimal to binary. It's that easy. It's sometimes nicer to use straight lines than these childish lines I've drawn here. One way to do that is take a sheet of binder paper and orientate it sideways. Turn it so that the blue lines go vertically with the red line at the top and the holes at the top. Something like this. And that's going to make it a lot nicer workspace. And then you go ahead and number that off. I like to put boxes down here for my hexadecimal because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have an area at the top which is where we put our decimal right up here at the top and then we're going to put our 
binary here and then we'll put our hex down here. So we have a conversion table that lets us convert up and down. So we can take a binary number and type it in the middle and we can convert it either into hex or decimal. And we could take a hex number at the bottom and convert it up. And notice how each hex symbol is going to be represented by these binary one through eight, one through eight, one through eight. And they just keep repeating. And we'll go ahead and do a few of these and um, see how it goes. So let's take a decimal number here. Let's do our 47 just to get back on the way we were working. Of course, I can't buy any of these. Another option is you don't need to fill in zeros all the way down, right? A byte starts right here, right? Because this is eight bits right in here. So this is my byte. So I might start filling in zeros there. I can't afford a 128. I can't afford a 64. I can go 32, no 16 an eight, a four, a two, and a one, as we did previously. Now I can notice that these line up. There's a reason I chose eight, is because hexadecimal is in groups of four, so I couldn't have started here. Um, I'd have to take it out to the byte boundary, because each hexadecimal symbol is a nibble, right? a nibble, which is four bits. So if I want to take this 0010, the one is a two. And so using my cheat sheet here at the bottom, notice that hexadecimal uses the zero through nine, same as decimal. So I would just write the two in here. And then here I have an eight, a four, and a two, and a one, which equals 15. And I know that 15 is going to be F. So 47 in decimal is 2F in hexadecimal. Let's do a couple more. Make sure you got the uh, idea here. Let's take 500. Okay, if I have 500, I come over here, I can't afford a 512. Notice I started here because I like to start a little higher than I need to be. And I can afford a 256 though, right? And a 128 and you might have to start writing these over at the side over here just to kind of start adding them up. Some of these are a little hard to do, right? Uh, boom, we don't have a 512, we have a 256. Right, I just add those up, eight and six is four, and then that's gonna be an eight, and that's gonna be 384. And you just come down and keep doing that. Let's add another 96 to that. We're up to 480. 496. 500. There it is. And I'm going to have to add a couple more zeros out here because I'm going to convert this to hexadecimal and I need a full nibble. So I need need to have my nibble boundary here. So here I have a one, right? That's all that I have in this boundary. I have zero, zero, zero. So I'm converting down, I'm going down. Take this one down and one is one. Now I have these come down and they all, you can have an eight, a four, a two, and a one, which of course we know is going to be 15, which 15 in hex is going to be F. And then here I have a four, and four is just four. So 500 in decimal, and we can write decimal with a subscripted one zero, okay? And we can write binary with a subscripted two, and we write hexadecimal with a zero X prefix. And so any number starting with zero X would have hexadecimal after it, any number with a subscripted 10 would be a decimal number, and any number with a subscripted 2 is your binary. Let's go ahead and try to do some conversions the other way. Let's take ABC. Well, that's kind of a fun one, ABCs, right? And A is 10, so I would need an 8 and a 2, right? You have an eight and a two. A turns into one zero one zero in hex. B is 11. And so I would have an eight and a 
2 and a 1. Okay, and then C is a 12, and C12 12 is going to be an 8 and a 4. And if I want to know what that is in decimal, then I go ahead and convert those upwards, and I just add them up. So I have a 2048. Okay, and a 512. And I like to kind of just add as I go, right? So. Okay, and then I have a 128. And I have, looks like, a 32 and a 16, which is 48. And we'll add those up. So 8 and 8 is 16. And then here we have 10 and 13. And this is going to be 7. So we have 2736. And so now what I have left is another 12 to tack on to that. And so my decimal total, I'll try and write it really nice here for you. Okay, so put the 10 on there, put the 2 on there, put my 0. So you can see it's very easy to convert up or down. You need a lot of practice doing this. And this is going to be an important skill to be able to do your subnetting. Let's take a look at how we convert numbers from binary to decimal. In this example, we would like to convert 27, the decimal number 27, into binary. We do that by basically buying it. We go down to the table here and we say, OK, um, 128, 27 is smaller. So we put a 0 in the 128. That's too expensive. 64, no, we put a 0 there. That's too expensive. 32, no, we put a 0 there. It's too expensive. OK, I can get a 16. So we go, OK, I can get 1 16. Then I can subtract 16 from 27. And of course, that leaves 11. And we go, OK, I can afford this 8. I'll take one of the 8. So the rule is you can only buy one of anything. Uh, so you either buy nothing or one, right? Because there's only two. Uh, two symbols, 0 or 1. So we've uh, bought nothing in the 128, nothing in the 64, nothing in the 32. We bought one of the 16, one of the 8. We're up to 24. We need three more. So we can't afford the 4. We only have three. We put a 0 there, and then we buy the 2 and the 1. Uh, you have to spend all that you have. So we've now spent out our 27. So 27 in binary is 0011011. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. You could also mathematically omit the zeros on the left. Well, much like if you saw something for $100, you could write $100,000100, and that would be the same, the same value. But it would just look stupid to have all those zeros on the left. But the zeros on the left don't actually change the value. We know this. They're just um, put there um, to fill in the space. So if you're talking about an octet, so in this case, this is an octet or a um, byte, which is a collection of eight bits. So if someone is asking for you to convert 27 to a binary byte, then you would want to provide the zeros on the left because you must provide eight ones and zeros or you wouldn't have a byte. Let's look at 126 and convert that into binary. So with 126, I can't afford the 128, so I put a zero there. So then I can afford the 64, the 32, the 16, the 8, the 4, and the 2, and um, have nothing left for the 0. In binary, it's pretty cool because each place value just doubles. We always start in every number system, be it hexadecimal, binary, or decimal, we always start with a 1's place. So the far right column is always 1. And then in binary, it doubles because binary is a base 2 system. So you just take 1. Uh, times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and so on. And it goes on to infinity. Well, we know in the decimal, which is base 10, we have a 1's place, and the 10's, and the 100, and the 1,000, the 10,000, and so on. And all we're doing is multiplying by 10 to get those. And of course, if you're doing hexadecimal, you'd be doing that by 16. So let's go ahead and convert binary to decimal. 
So we're going to go back the other way now. We're going to take this binary number 10111011 and convert that into decimal. In order to do that then, we just simply add up the values in the green header. So we write our binary number out and then we add it up. We have a 128, we have a 32, so I add those together, I get 160, we have a 16, I add that uh, and I get 176 and then I, I just keep going, right, as, as I go along. And it's going to equal 187. So here's one. Let's go ahead and do hexadecimal. So cool thing with hexadecimal is we know that each hexadecimal symbol is a nibble. We didn't know that. You know it now, right? So every hex symbol is a nibble. And so we don't actually need a separate table. We can use the same conversion table we use for binary decimal. We just go ahead and create a new row down there that has um, groups of four uh, binary um, numbers, which would be nibbles, and you can see that there. And so if I wanted to convert down, I just simply go, okay, I have in the red, for instance, I have two or three. So I have a two and a one, which is three. So I write the three, which is the hexadecimal symbol. And in the blue, I have a one, 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 one. Now notice I'm not using the numbers at the top. This is a little confusing. The numbers are always one, two, four, eight, because remember it's a nibble. So if you add up one, two, four, eight, so you have to ignore the 16, 32, 64, 128. It's always one, two, four, eight, one, two, four, eight. There's a reason for that is hexadecimal is zero through 15, right? And if you add up one, two, four, and eight, you get 15. So we need the 1248 to represent the values 0 through 15, which are the hexadecimal uh, values we want to show. OK, so let's convert hexadecimal to binary and decimal. Let's try to convert F7 into binary. So we know that an F is 15, or 1111. And we know that 7 then would not have an 8, but it would have a 4 and a 2 and a 1 and it would look something like that. And once we've converted our um, F7 into binary, we can now convert the binary into decimal. So the technique I'm showing you, you never can go from hexadecimal to decimal. You have to go hexadecimal to binary to decimal. Binary becomes the glue, if you will, that allows us to convert. You can still convert from anything to anything, but you have to make a stop in the binary world to get there. And that's because of the beauty of hexadecimal being a factor of four of binary. So again, hexadecimal is uh, a nibble or uh, four, factor of four over the binary.